Hello Internet and welcome to my channel. Or welcome for the very first time to my channel. Here comes an intro, if you're new here. My name is Matthew van der Pitt. I'm a Belgian, I live in Sydney, Australia. I'm a time-lapse and app-lapse photographer. This channel is all about time-lapse travel and teaching. Today we're talking about the Zhiyun Tech Crane 2. We're going to do an unboxing and I'm going to teach you how to shoot hyperlapses on this bad boy. I'm so excited about this thing, honestly. Because I've been waiting for a gimbal, a single grip gimbal, it means, you know, carry it in one hand, that can support my 1DX Mark II, which is quite a heavy camera. This thing uh, holds up to, I don't know, 3 point something kilos, and yeah, oh, 3.2 kilos, and I'm just so incredibly excited about this. So, let's take it out of the box. The box that's been damaged in the shipment. I don't know who shipped it, I think it was DHL. Bad, bad DHL. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna gonna show you what's in this box. I hope you're uh, you're interested. I'll put the time code for the uh, the tutorial somewhere so you can click through in case you don't wanna don't wanna see this. But you know, I love me a good unboxing. I'm not saying it's a good unboxing. All I'm saying is this is a unboxing. This is the interior. It's got some plastic. Oh, it's got something here already. Shoulder strap. And then pretty much there's nothing else in the box aside of some foam. And then it comes in this comes in this case. Woohoo, check this out. Alright, magic reveal. Let's see if I can pull that off. One, two, three. Bang! Oh fuck. <laughs> Something in here. This feels like a user manual. Riveting. Let's not. You're not here for that. You're here for this. This is the carry case. This is nice. It's kind of like a soft hard case. Um, which is great to have because I don't know how else you'd carry this thing around. Um, what I, I have to say, this video is sponsored by Zhiyun Tech, so they um, sent me this, this gimbal. Ow! This is going great! <laughs> sent me this gimbal in exchange for this video. So thanks Zhiyun for helping me out with the channel. Here we have it. Let me just reposition that. This is... Can you see it? I think we need some more light. Hold on. <sighs> Oof, look at that. That's what's in it. So we have a little tripod base right here. The actual gimbal with all the mounting options and stuff. Battery charger and the batteries. And this is a neat case. I think this gimbal sells as a whole package. Let me turn that down because that is so bright. That's better. Um, sells for less than a thousand bucks, which is crazy if you think about how far technologies come. Um, you know, gimbals used to be thousands and thousands of euros, and now they're just like plug and play. I've got one for my phone, which cost me like 120, 120 bucks US, I think. Um, I'll link the, the link, I'll, I'll put the link to that video in the description, um, because I'm, in that one I teach you how to shoot hyperlapse on your phone, and now with this one I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to hyperlapse on your DSLR, with the long exposure photos and stuff that I talked about, and I'm I'm, honestly, I'm just, I don't even know what to say. I'm s super excited. So I'm going to charge these batteries. And I'm going to take out a shoot and walk you through the whole thing, how to create these awesome visuals. By the way, I have to say, these visuals, even though I've always wanted to do them, but my buddy Alban back in Belgium actually did them before I was able to do them. Um, so here's a clip. Whoa. Alban shot that in Valencia. Alban's a really cool dude. He's pretty much me, but he lives in Belgium, in Antwerp, where I'm from. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm hoping to collaborate with him sometime in the future to make this little, uh, little project, whatever it is, because, um, yeah, we get along really well and he's got some amazing work, so make sure to go check him out. All right, anyways, enough banter. Let's get to the tutorial section of the video. Right after I stopped recording on the previous clip, I discovered something hidden in this case. Right below these mounting options uh, is a little Zhiyun box that contains cables, cables, um, What's in here? This is a uh, micro USB to micro USB. There is a mini uh, jack 2.5 mil to micro USB. <laughs> which will plug into the battery charger, which will charge the batteries. So we're going to let these charge for a bit, and then we're going to go out and shoot. I took a train down to Circular Quay, which is probably the most popular tourist spot in Sydney. Open up the case and first thing you do is screw on the base uh, tripod plate thingy to the gimbal so that you can drop it down on a level surface and open it up to balance your whole rig. Now I've already put the 
uh, gimbal plate on the camera and today's camera is a 5D3 with the Tokina 11-16 lens. Now yes that is a crop sensor or crop camera lens but it fits on a full frame camera as long as you put it at 16 millimeter focal length. Do not forget to take off your lens cap, it's still on there as you can see, and then start balancing the whole rig. Now this is surprisingly easy, there's only three axes that you have to fine tune and you just tilt it on one side to see where it falls to and then you obviously move it in the opposite direction. Another reason I'm shooting on a 5D3 today and not the 1DX is because if you want to put the 1DX on this gimbal, and that's a future video, if you want to put the 1DX on here, you need to tune that little um, clamp on the right a little bit and that's just not ideal for some run and gun shooting, which is definitely the style that we'll be doing today. Power on the gimbal and whoop, there we go, it is powered on and it starts off in follow mode. Now this means that when you turn around the gimbal and the grip, it, the camera will follow your movements. Now that's not what we want to do today. Today we're going to be shooting only in lock mode where you put the camera in a certain orientation and if you then move the gimbal nothing changes the camera will stay pointed in the same direction which is honestly so easy as you can see I've attached my intervalometer which will trigger the photos and now this is the whole idea as I talked about in my previous gimbal video long exposure photos while walking around with this gimbal that's gonna give us some incredibly incredibly smooth motion blur what I'm doing here is just checking the focus and taking a little test shot and then we are pretty much good to go. Before we're off I want to show you the two modes that I was talking about. This is as you can see follow mode, I move the gimbal and the camera follows my motion. I then flick it onto lock mode and as long as you move it carefully the camera will stay pointed in the exact same direction no matter the orientation of the gimbal. You can then also fine tune it using the little joystick on the gimbal control unit. I apologize for the shaky cam, I forgot to turn on the image stabilization on my head mounted GoPro. Here you can see how easy it is. I'm just walking slowly, obviously the camera's pointed at the bridge, I'm looking quite angry uh, to get people out of the way, no that's, not, that's a joke, that's just my resting bitch face. And this is my pace, quite slow but steady. Now I'm going to show you the sequence that came straight out of camera without any extra stabilization. As you can see, this is pretty damn impressive, and that motion blur makes everything just look so, so good. Now, this is unstabilized. Here it is stabilized with the After Effects Warp Stabilizer with smoothness on 10%, and the following clip has it stabilized twice. And I just, I mean, my career's done. Everyone can do hyperlapses now. I'm over. Goodbye. Jokes, for now we're still limited to moving straight ahead and not panning around an object. This is another shot straight out of camera, no stabilization, and here it is with the stabilizer at 10%. I'll go over how to post-process this in a second. Here's another shot straight out of camera, unstabilized. Now the interesting thing here is, for this shot specifically, it looked better without adding the warp stabilizer. As you can see, I've added the warp stabilizer. There's too many elements for the tracker to focus on, and it just kind of warps it to no end, and it doesn't look good. And the final shot. As it turns out, when the motor setting is on high and the camera is not actually that heavy, it might vibrate a little bit, but even then, adding the warp stabilizer makes everything just look so, so smooth. Let's wrap it up with this final shot, and then I'm going to show you how to post-process these, which is actually really, really easy. Open up Adobe After Effects and import the sequence that you just shot. I'm working with the JPEG here straight out of camera because I don't want to spend the time color grading the RAWs and exporting them because that'll take ages. Import it as a sequence, put it in a little folder to keep everything nice and organized, and then create a new comp from your master comp, and then go to Tracker, add the Warp Stabilizer, and set the smoothness to 10%. Wait until the anal anal analyzation, analyzing, analyzing, yeah, I don't know how you say that. Analyzation is done. Export your clip, and you're pretty much good to go. Like, these all work with one run of stabilizing, and that's just so nice. And just like that, we've come to the end of this Hyperlapse Gimbal tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, just to recap, what do you need? You need a camera, obviously, a wide-angle lens, a 10-stop ND filter, an intervalometer, a gimbal, and something to shoot. Now, I'm going to go in way more detail about the workflow and the process uh, of this whole tutorial on my blog, which I've started recently, and I hope that you'll come check it out. Link's down below. It's mattjoes.com slash blog, obviously. Also, if you want to support the channel or if you want to support me, you can come check me out on patreon.com slash mattjoes. And if you would like to know what gear I use to shoot, check out kit.com slash mattjoes. 
About gear, if you want to buy any of the things that we've talked about, there are some purchase links in the description down below. They're affiliate links, so when you click on them and you buy something, I get a small percentage of the sale. You won't be paying extra, I just get a little cut of what you buy and that helps me uh, with the channel and it helps me to create more tutorials and stuff like that. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate you and the channel's been growing really well. We just hit 32,000 subscribers and I'm really happy about that. Thanks for all the support and I will hopefully see you on the next video. Bonus content time, a fun edit that you can do with straight on moving shots like this is keyframing the first and last frame and manipulating the scale. This gives you the dolly zoom or vertigo effect that Hitchcock invented back in the, I don't even know what year. Another one you can do is zoom in on the scale or increase the scale and then just manipulate the rotation of the shot giving you this trippy flying effect, it's pretty cool. If you have any other video tutorial or video suggestions, please drop them in the comments below so I can check them out and maybe add them to my videos to shoot list. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next one.